Hello everybody, my name is Janet Ravel Orr and yes, I'm the CEO and founder of Four Eve Stars International and the producer of the Mini Woodstock Festival. Hope you do enjoy this month's Mini Woodstock Festival and um, keep watching everybody, okay? All right, bye-bye for now from Galita in California at the Dream Machine USA. Bye-bye for now. Festival in Santa Barbara, California. Yes, this is the show where Four Reef Stars International shine. It's for entrepreneurs in the entertainment field. And tonight we have some great guests for you. So keep tuned. Here we go at the Dream Machine USA. Telling you, lift your glasses, get all your hors d'oeuvres ready, because we're going to have fun tonight. You're at the Dream Machine USA at ABG Studios and our TV studios, Mini Woodstock Festival. So join us. Have fun tonight. We've got some great guests for you. Yay! Keep tuned, everybody. And here's Lucy Lippner. You're at the Mini Woodstock Festival, and I'm Lucy Luca reporting on the Four Reef Stars International. Have you got your drinks? They may not be alcoholic, but you get your drinks and all your hors d'oeuvres. Like us, we're going to have some fun. So sit back, relax, and let's watch a wonderful Mini Woodstock Festival this month. I have a great guest. He's an entrepreneur, yes, and he lives in Montecito. And I'm very excited because I'm sure lots of people know him. So welcome to Nick Hoffman. Hey, cheers, Nick. Cheers to my appearance with you. Oh, you're, I'm so glad you could make it. My privilege. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear all about you, Nick, because I know Ravel interviewed Nick on the musician segment. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, why did you want to do this and why music? And tell us about your upbringing. Just give everybody some wonderful information about you. My mom had me take guitar lessons when I was 10 years old, which I didn't like. And then I resumed uh, my career with uh, music once I made the connection in high school between uh, women, guitars, music. It <laughs> spurred me on and I joined uh, up with some, well, first I started off as a folk musician. Then I moved to L.A. and uh, I interacted with some, some fairly... Uh, well-known figures in the music industry like Paul Revere and the Raiders, the Birds, Terry Melcher, and you know, and some others. So I was kind of on a part of that scene. And then I moved back to Santa Barbara and then I started having kids. I have five kids, uh, the first of whom was born in uh, 1977. And so that's kind of kept me a homeboy for this time, but I've been active in a number of bands. Uh, including the Rhythm Rangers, the Fog, the Forbidden Blues Band, the Lifters and you know a few others as we all go through our uh, different stages and fortunately I'm still playing still active on the scene and and real happy to be here now back in about 1975 or so me and my buddies got together and we started welding and we had the idea to make a gu guitar hollow bodied out of steel so we took 20 gauge steel 
kind of bent it real pr very primitively, you know, and not no machine work involved, and put a neck on it, and uh, you know, the standard Fender neck and bridge and stuff, and played it, and it sounded different. So that kind of spurred spurred us on to do further experimentations, and then uh, I was do I. Start, uh, started my career, actually money-making career, doing auto body work. Oh, okay. And so... Um, was that in Santa Barbara? Yeah, Santa oh. Barbara, all, all, all in Santa Barbara. And I was fortunate enough to uh, meet a patent attorney whose name was Jim Hawes. And I showed him my ID and he said uh, that it might it would be worth a try to patent it. And in exchange, I restored his car, which was a Pontiac Le Mans. So I started working on that and he in turn helped me prepare the patent. And actually I got a patent on the idea. Well, you're on the web. Yeah. Basically, people can write to you, yeah, they see your guitars, the videos, and they, they can, the I see. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so then you'll have a website that they'll go to, or the Facebook, yeah. they'll there get in touch with you. On Facebook at this point. Okay, yeah. well, the, the, and so basically, though, it's a store, because even on the web, they call exactly. it a storefront and everything. Yeah. And um, so tell me, um, so what was the I? Why did you do this? I mean, there must have been I, a reason that you you suddenly decided. Oh, you know what? Well, I I was just learning how to weld. I was just starting off in auto body work, and my love was music. And it, I don't know why. Me and my friend just had this idea that we'd make a hollow body guitar out of steel, and just the the result of it wa was gratifying in 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 the meaning that it sounded different. Right. I knew I was onto something immediately because the sound was different, and so I just pursued it little by little, and uh, you know I got I got mo a more refined manufacturing process because I knew people that worked for companies that could that consented to help me, you know, and so we came up with the boxes that that you can see on the guitars, and then uh, put necks on them and made the construction process, which is. Uh, you know, it's, it's as refined as I think the instrument needs to be at this point to, to be a, you know, viable uh, addition to the family of electric guitars. And uh, What I notice is about these guitars, um, women, girls can really pick them up and just play them. They're so, they're so much smaller they're and light. lighter. And, um, they're a little more compact, yes. and they sit on your lap. Yeah, so they're different. easy. They're yeah. easy to to hold because yeah. guitars have always been really hard for me to and pick heavy. up and heavy, yeah. but awkward. You mm -hmm. know, if you look at girls playing the normal size guitars, they got their foot sometimes on a on a chair. Sure, or or, or they the or guitars look down, big in or relation. Or they look big for them because yeah. a lot of girls are, are smaller. Yeah. But these these guitars are really really pretty. <laughs> Thank you. They're very Thanks for pretty. the compliment. Yeah, I think they're really, really pretty. And um, to me, it seems like you, you've um, gone, you know, you've come up with something that's so unique, and uh, the sound is unique. I mean, you, you actually played with one of them mm -hmm. with with as we are, right? Mm -hmm. on, on the music segment. You were born in Boston. Correct. At three, your family yeah. moved to Santa Barbara. No, to uh, to Los Angeles. Yeah, to LA. Okay. And then, when, why did you go to New York? What oh, was well, that my, about? Uh, my dad got transferred his business. Okay. And, uh, and so we lived in White Plains for a couple of years, and then he got transferred back out here to Santa Barbara uh, for the Center of the Study of Democratic Institutions. Wow, what, is your, what was your dad doing? He was... He must uh, be well said, known. Yeah, is Halleck Hoffman. He, he worked for the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions, which has got to be pretty much uh, a self-evident unexplainable thing <laughs> yeah it's pretty yeah. interesting yeah i mean d democratic to study democratic institutions okay <laughs> you know but they they made you know it was it was high on the intellectual pantheon he was doing among, okay he was obviously. doing all right yeah <laughs> he was an intellectual he was, man yeah, living in santa barbara living Ama exactly yeah. and so you guys live in montecito we right? lived in on uh, schoolhouse road in montecito nice. and, yeah. is that where you are now or are you in no I, or i'm santa barbara? in santa barbara kind of near the museum of natural history oh it's awful, nice around there uh, lucky and uh Grateful to be there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's amazing how Santa Barbara grew from the time, probably when you bought your house, because it's just, uh -huh. uh, you know. Yeah, it used to be lemon orchards all around Goleta, and now it's uh, track, I know. <laughs> Now there's the houses. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And so I'd like to go back a little bit in history, okay. because I know that um, you have some stories about, well, of all people, folks, Charles Manson. So give us a little bit of, of your story about that. When I moved to LA, I had a manager, his name was Greg Jacobson, and he knew Terry Melcher. 
and he brought our band to his attention. And Terry actually ended up signing me and my girlfriend to a contract. And uh, we, we were, he wanted us to get a band together, so we would practice up at his house on Beverly Cannon Drive, which is the very summit up there. And as it turned out, that was the house in which the Manson murders occurred. With Sharon Tate. And Sharon Tate and uh, the Folgers, and yeah. I forget the, uh, each and every one. Uh, but I was there a few years earlier, uh, and so I wasn't a part of that scene, but it was, it was just kind of, uh, it's trippy to think that you were actually in the house where a piece of history, uh, you know, even though it's notorious, did occur. Yes, that's so. kind of very scary. And the thing, folks, Charles Manson is still alive. This is what, it always, it always uh, freaks me out, thinking that he's still alive. He's yeah. somebody so horrendous. And then you went and told me he got married to somebody. I, I, just, I, I understand just from what I see online and stuff that yeah, uh, he's just, he may have gotten married. In, uh, yeah, crazy, crazy man. Yeah. So, um, and tell us some other stories. I know that you, you obviously were with some, you know, many bands that you were uh, with. The stories is that I uh, played on a recording session with Paul Revere and the Raiders that actually made the record. It's on the record Revolution, and I played harmonica on the song Reno. And, uh, of course, everybody can look that up in uh, iTunes and stuff and hear my harmonica solo. Very soulful, very strong. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, m being in the studio with those guys, Columbia Studio A, which is about the size of a basketball court, huge studio, and we were, I was just in a tiny little little re booth. booth yeah with my harmonica and listening to over the headphones and and uh terry was uh behind the glass and um smitty the drummer was there and drake levin the guitar player was there and i i just blew my horn man and it got on the record and i was like yes you know <laughs> and you know when we, we just we cruised around la and we're part of the hippie scene and went to the love-ins and generally drank in as 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 well as we could the whole uh, cultural atmosphere and, and it was yeah. actually quite beautiful and then uh, then you know drugs and all kind of things that kind of tip the scale into the negative and then we, you know sex drugs and, the rest, and rock and roll so well the, the <laughs> sex and the rock and roll weren't so bad but i think it was the drugs that that, <laughs> messed that everything kind of messed everything yeah. yeah love of music has never stopped in your life all, all the way it's yeah still still really strong right now right yeah. so if people want you to um get a hold of you they would just get a hold of you on facebook perfect yeah that and, would be uh, good you can go to my uh, you know nick hoffman on facebook and there where i'm playing i post that i was thinking that you were going to actually show us the different sounds would, is that what you that would be cool that yeah. would be cool so i start uh playing it but and this is a bass guitar right? no no this is a, this is a regular, regular. Oh, this is the regular guitar. now So yeah, the, the, the reason why this guitar sounds different. Yeah, show, show it up too. Yeah. yeah. The reason why it sounds different is that most electric guitars, and if you can pan down oh, to, to, to show the pickups go through the surface of the guitar. Yeah. So the, 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 what the tone is is sampled from the strings against the pickup. In the case of this guitar, the pickups are underneath the metal. Mm -hmm. Can you show it? Can sure. You see it then? Underneath the There's no pickups coming through as there are in regular guitars. <laughs> They're underneath, so it's sampling the resonance of the box, which is Beautiful. why why it sounds different from from so from everything else. Right. Yeah, and so uh, that's uh, so that's my story, and right. here we are. You know? <laughs> so I see you have three there, and then you have this one four, mm -hmm. and I know you've got another one over there. Yeah. That's the bass one, right? That's the bass. So um, what? I, what is the difference between each one of those guitars? Is there a difference or are they all the same sounding? No, they they all sound different from each other. Do they really? Yeah. Um, um, well. 
And I, I want to add uh, one other thing to our conversation. Uh, the, I named the, this guitar as the Brian Jones Tribute. Uh -huh. And I want to uh, just say a little bit about why I did that. I think Brian Jones, who started the Rolling Stones, is uh, an underappreciated uh, figure in the history of music. And he, he started, you know, was very instrumental in creating the rebellious attitude. Mm -hmm. He was a master musician in my book. He ha has the record. He played 33 different musical instruments in the studio. Wow. Like he played the, the sitar, of course, on Paint It Black. And he played the piano and the French horn and the alto sax and the recorder and, you know, tambura and uh, prob and played the marimba, like on Under My Thumb. Dun, 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 dun. And... Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring his uh, memory back. It says, it says Brian Jones Tribute. Oh, my goodness, it does, too. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Yeah. I liked, I always liked Brian Jones, too. Yeah. Um, it's probably because I'm a bit of a rebel. Well, Ravel is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Lucy right now. Yeah. So this is great. So tell us a little bit more. What's for the future for Nick Hoffman? Uh, well, What's going on now? I know you're the entrepreneur of, of this wonderful dream that you have, and you play locally, but there's probably more. What, what's more uh, well, in your we, life? We want to... We, we, well, you I, and your I wife? I CDs out, you know, a few CDs of my own, and, and uh, basically putting out original music, original guitars, and, and uh, just more original, you know, just, just ideas and... Enjoying your life. Enjoying and, and, and being able to uh, put out some humor, I think. Lighten the... Lighten the up. Yeah, Everybody lighten. needs to lighten up, yeah, don't they? They do, you know, and not take everything so, so seriously. So serious, You're you know. so right about that. And, and music helps people escape. And I yes. think if I can add a new voice, uh, you know, to the music thing, that may, in some small way, uh, further the cause, as it were, you know. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about your wife, because you've been together a long time. We have. We, we have tell three us kids about together. Your wife. Her name's Laurel, and I love her dearly, and uh, she has a cooking business at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Auntie and... Lala's Sweet Petites. Oh, my gosh. Did you meet Laurel? Uh, I met her, I think it was 1988. Wow. And uh, I was playing music at the time, which is no big surprise, I guess, but... <laughs> And uh, we have three kids together, Jack, Juliana, and Brian, and uh, one big happy family. That's wonderful. Yeah. Anything else that you want to share with everybody out there? Uh, well, let's see. Um, I'd like to share the tone of maybe one of the other okay, guitars. Okay, go ahead. First of all, by contrast, let's just revisit uh, this one. <laughs> Let's try this one, which is called The Offender. Ah, <laughs> The Offender. This is The Offender. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, it's so light. Oh, it sounds lovely. Oh my gosh, it's so, so rich. It's a different, yeah. I yeah. love that rich In sound. Oh, it's beautiful. So this has, wow. in, in compare, it has way different tone from the others. Ho hopefully. sort of a twangy. <laughs>
Wow, well, that's great. Yeah. You know what I like about it? I like the design, the way it just sits on your knee like that. That's that's the purpose of these. Uh, it's beautiful. The ergonomic, and this this one is designed so when you lay your uh, forearm across it, it doesn't encounter this crease here. It's, uh, provides it's beautiful. A, kind of a armrest. Yeah, it's thing. beautiful. Yeah. And, well, uh, and it, amazing. As, as, uh, it contrasts with the tone of uh, the last one I played mm. pretty pretty dramatically. It's very uh, if different. I, if I want to, you know. It's very say beautiful. So myself. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. I love the rich sound. Well, I'm really excited for you, Nick. I think that, you know, you have a great future. It's been a wonderful Lucy Luca with Nick Hoffman Guitars. Great, great interview. Love the music, love the guitars. So you know what's coming up next, everybody? Now don't adjust your TV sets, because tutu time is next, Nick. Look out. Yeah, Lucy Lucas saying bye-bye for this month, and thank you, Nick. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, it's you're welcome. I hope you, well, I yeah. hope you come back. I hope I come and back And tell us well. some more news. Okay. And meanwhile, everybody, stay on TVSB, because tutu time is about to come on. So thanks for listening and watching Lucy Luca. I'll see you next month. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Cheers, Nick. Cheers, indeed. Oh, I just received a text. Oh, my goodness, you've got me with my hair all in rollers. Anyway, I'm excited because tutu time is about to happen, everybody. So all the boys and girls, get ready. It's tutu time. It's tutu time. It's tutu time for the young stars of Foreign. Tell me your goals. Tell me your dreams. Tutu time, tell me your goals, tell me your dreams at tutu time, it's tutu time and she loves you, yeah, 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 it's tutu time and she loves you, yeah, tell me your goals, tell me your dreams, you're the young stars of Farid, tutu time, tutu time, it's tutu time. Welcome back to Tutu Time. Yes, I have a fabulous guest. Yes, you all know this guest because you've watched his sister every now and then on Tutu Time. Yes, and you've seen him. And uh, it's Jack Metcalf. How are you doing, Jack? Good. That's good. So we're going to find out about Jack today because I remember the last time, I think, didn't you come... Well, the time before last, you were all done up in a nice suit and everything. I remember once. It was wonderful. And you played the little ukulele that I had. So how's your life going as far as performance? Because I know, Jack, you like to play instruments, don't you? Right. So how's the guitar going, Jack? Pretty good. Really? Yeah? And when you say pretty good, how, does, how is that on, on, a, on one to ten? Is it ten or is it five or is it one? Good. Ten. Ten. So he loves to play guitar, right? A any tunes that you can remember that you play? Uh, well, Dad's still teaching me, but I really like it. You really like to play guitar. Do you like, is, is it like you feel that you can jam yourself? Yeah, that's cool. Can't wait till you're old enough and you come on into two, two times mini Woodstock Festival and jam with Dan and Ravel, huh? As we are, wouldn't that be fun? So tell me, do you have some news about what's been going on? Because I haven't talked to you for a while on Tutu Time. What's been going on in your life? Well, I just earned 30 stickers like a couple of weeks ago and I earned my skateboard. Oh my goodness, your mum and dad have got this whole sticker thing going, huh? Oh my goodness, so you got a skateboard? Wow, and um, what do you think about having a skateboard? Is it scary to ride a skateboard? No, nope. super fun. Have you fallen off a lot? Only like two times. Wow, so you're pretty good. You, you balance real good then, huh? Yeah, and also I've been practicing for three years. Wow, how did you practice without a skateboard for three years? I actually used my friends. Oh, nice to have friends, isn't it? So how, how are you doing with that at school? Who's your latest friend? Ryan. Ryan. He, that wasn't who you had before. I'm trying to forget, remember the name you had before. That was a nice name. I've forgotten now, but 
I guess when we're at school, we go through different friends, different years, huh? What what grade are you in now? Um. Well, I was in first, and next year I'm going to be in second. Oh, my goodness. After the summer, you go into second grade? Yep. Wow. How old are you now? Seven. Okay, so you'll be eight during second grade? Yeah. Wow. Time's flying, isn't it? Because everybody out there, him and his two brothers, and his sister, actually, they're all doing films now. So, you know, you want to catch them all together? Go rent a movie called This Is 40, and you'll get the whole Metcalf crew, the triplets all together. So tell us what you've been up to as far as your films, Jack. Um, well, like a couple weeks ago, I got an audition, and, and it's a really funny, funny movie. Oh, it is? Really? And kind of freaky. It's freaky as well. It's freaky and funny. Okay, so it was an audition, so you have to wait to see if there's a callback, do you? Already got a callback. Already got a callback. Oh my goodness. And uh, so, so, so did you actually get the part, or is that the first callback? Because sometimes there's like two or three callbacks, right? Uh, yeah. So you're waiting. So you're in the waiting game right now. But there might be another movie to come out, yes? Oh yeah. my goodness, that's so great. Well, we've really had fun with you on Tutu Time right now. So are you going to come back and tell us more about your life? Yeah. Yeah? Did you have fun on Tutu Time? Yeah. Well, let's say goodbye to everybody. Lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, lots of fun. Say bye-bye. Yeah, bye. From Tutu Time and Jack. Well, hello and welcome back to Tutu Time. I'm very excited because now we're with the teenagers. So I have a great guest with me today. Yes, and her name is Samantha Sander. And you'll all remember Samantha. Welcome, Samantha. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very well. So, you know, I know you just rushed in from an incredible practice. Yes. So, you know, tell us what's been going on this year. Um, It's been, well, right now, I'm, it's just been kind of cooling down and we're getting into I'm going into senior year this coming so it's kind of like I'm trying to situate everything and figure some stuff out to kind of make it a little bit easier next year and um, right now I'm in volleyball season so I'm practicing is already starting before school started so it's kind of keeping the schedule nice and busy and starting to gain that school structure without having to be fully at school, at school. which is nice. And so volleyball, that's the one where you hit it over the net like yes. that, isn't it? So tell us a little bit about volleyball. Um, it's definitely my favorite out of the three sports I play, without, out of softball and soccer and volleyball, it's my favorite. And um, it's just like, a, it's fun because it's the six of you on the court and you're all cheering together and you're working hard together and it's competitive and it's fun. And it's also my more of my newer one. I haven't played it for as long as soccer and volleyball, or as soccer and softball. Soccer and softball. Yeah. So what happened last year with soccer? I mean, I mean, was it last year's soccer, or was it uh, the beginning the, of this year? It was last year. I didn't play. Okay. But I'm gonna play this coming year. Oh, okay. So what was it you were doing? Because I think I think we saw you at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was going on from then to now you're in volleyball and then you'll get back into soccer again? Yeah. So so what was the it sport was, that you got into after that? Um, after after volleyball we go into soccer and then after that it goes into s softball. So you were in softball. Yeah, exactly. So I know something exciting like really happened in softball. Um, you won your competition or so. Tell we, us about that. We had a really good season this year. We you played, did? yeah, we had a really good team and we played really well all throughout the whole year. And um, for our CIF competition, which is like the big tournament at the end of the year for all the high schools, we um, we got all the way to semifinals, which is which is pretty well because it's out of a lot of really talented teams. Tell them your school again. Um, Dos Pueblos High School. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, good old Dos Pueblos. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but we did good. We did. We played really well, and this coming year is going to be even better. I think we're going to be even stronger. So oh, that's yeah. exciting. And I know that um, with the softball doesn't doesn't um, don't you have like a dance or something at school um, around about the same time? Or yeah, there's well right in that towards the end of softball season, right when CIF's kind of starting, we have our prom. 
which is the very end of the year for the seniors, or if you get asked as a junior, you go. And then um, there's there's another thing called Sadie Talkins, which is when the boys ask the girls, and that's toward, during the season. But that's I think that covers most of the dances during softball season. Wow. And I, I know your mom actually host. Yeah. Had all you um, sit with. Well, you're not senior yet. It was, yeah, it was seniors and juniors. Oh, okay, so seniors and yeah. juniors. And she had everybody up yeah, there at the ranch. Prom, yeah, The Sander Ranch. Oh, my goodness, yeah. that's a lot of people. It was a good picture, good for pictures, because it was nice lighting and it's a good background. So. Yes, I see. Is that when you wore that beautiful red dress? Um, No, oh, that was the blue one. The blue dress. Oh, right. my gosh. She looks so gorgeous and everything that <laughs> Thank she wears. You. Uh, unbelievable. Excited about senior yes, year? Yes, very excited. Really? It's going to be really fun. It's, so will you be very busy or, or have you already, because a lot of people I know when um, different people I've had on here and mm -hmm. they're going into senior year, they could tell me on Tutu time that, well, they really haven't got a lot to do because they yeah. deliberately tried to get everything together. Mm -hmm. So their senior year is like fun, fun, fun. <laughs> um, my senior year is probably going to be a happy medium. There's gonna, I think it's going to go kind of through flows of tough times and flows of more of low times. I'm, I got into a leadership class, which oh, is, wow. um, which was kind of nice, but that will kind of higher the stress levels in certain situations because it's another job that you're going to have on top of going to school, but it's, it's one that I'm going to enjoy doing. So, so, so this is, this is like a work it's experience a, class? Or? It's a class at DP that's offered for, most high schools have it. It's just called the leadership class and it's, but you work on campus in, to better the school. So like all, like things like dances, you're the one planning the dances or things like fundraisers and stuff. You are kind of the people that the school should go to to help out with it. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah, it's good for experience, for working and things like that. That's incredible. So what other things have you done? I, I, I thought I heard that you were actually, actually, like, volunteering or working somewhere. Um, I've, I've been volunteering around for different organizations, but I haven't really been working, working as, like, a job yet besides like babysitting and things like that here and there, but nothing as a mandatory job. Might but as well. with your volunteer work, what kind of things were um, you doing there? There was like a lot of baking for cause, which I think I've talked about before. There was the Previous. cancer one. The yeah, the exactly. Baking for cause, you oh, pretty much bake for, for um, like cancer patients, terminally ill cancer patients for um, different holidays and stuff. And it's like you you just supply them with the food and stuff that they'll have at their gatherings, which is always oh, nice. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Just little things here and there. Nothing nothing too big has been going on with that. So what about, um, seeing it's your senior year, do you have to start thinking about what you're going to do after school, after the senior year, like when yeah. it's finished? Do you have to start thinking about yeah, that Yeah, no, definitely. Our, um, our, to apply to colleges, we have to start right off the bat so once senior year starts. They, wow. Yeah, it goes pretty fast, but... Um, I'm tr I'm looking into colleges and I'm trying to figure out where I want to go. I'm probably going to stay in California, but um, I'm not sure exactly where I want to go in California. I think I have an idea of what I want to major in, but um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. So, folks, I think that um, we're going to have to find out about that <laughs> later on. So, it, you know, it's wonderful having you back to Thank two two you. time, Samantha. It's always a pleasure mm -hmm. when you come uh, have the time and. Of course, you're so busy, and we were really lucky to get her today. So I wish you all the luck, and come Thank back you. and tell us more of what's going on in your life. Will you do that? Yes, of course. Okay, well, let's say bye-bye to everybody, bye. and uh, let's wish Samantha a happy year and a senior year. Have lots of fun. I guess there's lots of dances that you are going to organize. All right, bye-bye for now from Tutu Time. Bye. I hope you enjoyed Tutu Time. Now you're at the artist segment, and I have a great superstar guest with me tonight. Yes, a lot of people in Santa Barbara will know this guy. Really fun guy. I've known him a long time. One of Arthur's friends, and uh, it's very, very exciting. So, hello, Tim Smith. Anyway, Tim is an incredible artist, as you can see. And I think Dan has been doing a great job showing all his art. Uh, amazing stuff that he puts together Thanks. and um, as you can see here 
really, really beautiful stuff. And also around, we have a lovely set tonight, thanks to Tim, because all his beautiful stuff is around showing us. He's an artist, he's an entrepreneur, he does everything. Um, and he actually creates all this stuff. It's like, it's in your life. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it is my life, not just in my life. It's, uh, art's been a part of my life for my, forever since I was a kid. Art camps and this and this and that. And uh, once I, I got a little older, I started creating. And it's as long as I'm, I'm uh, doing what I'm passionate about, you know, and not blocking myself out, uh, it's, it's all a part of my life. And I hope it's in, in my life forever. All you that don't know me out there, hi, I'm Ravel, singer-songwriter with As We Are, and Tim, He's also a bass player, and maybe one day we'll get him on the musician segment. But he's really flourishing right now with this awesome stuff. I mean, look at that guy there. That's that's awesome. He should be facing the other way, shouldn't he? <laughs> no, nah, he's got he's set up. He's set up the right way. So the camera? He's, no, yeah, he's looking the other way. Oh, it's both I ways. See the abs. Yeah, he goes all around, but yeah, he's set up. He's right. got abs that way too. So yeah, well, that's you can just see, you see through. You, you know, he's clear. Through, yeah. It's clear. But yeah, this act, this piece here took me about. Um, uh, I worked from the base up for about, I'd say, uh, separated about four weeks actually, and I made the the figure of the person, and then um, this is what we call in glass an implosion. Uh, wow. which a lot of glass blowers would know, but that's what uh, necklaces are made from and uh, stuff like this and flowers and that's the same thing. So he's sitting on a flower and I like to call it in, uh, embrace and he's kind of embracing life, you know, and, and the fact that this is kind of a representation of life and earth and uh, this, this guy here is enjoying the fact that he's living, you know. It's beautiful. Thank it's you so really much. It's beautiful. I can't, and I know that um, you're a local guy. Were you born in Santa Barbara? Born and raised, yeah. Wow. All your family? Yeah. So uh, well, no, my my father moved here from Toledo, Ohio in 71 or 2 and never left. And my mom moved here from Tustin, met my dad, and uh, and yeah, they have they were living in IV and, and they haven't left ever since. Isn't that great? And then they, so I they had the to. children here. Yeah. All yeah. you guys. So we're first generation, me right. and my two brothers, yeah. Wow, that's it's awesome. It's like our kids. Dan and I came from different places. He came from Hygiene, Colorado, ended up in Carpinteria with his dad and then back in Santa Barbara. And I came from, you know, born in England, raised in Australia, traveled the world, ended up here, <laughs> met Dan and did the same thing as your parents did and had two, we had two children. What a place to end though, right? Yeah. I know, know, and they're your friends. That's what I yeah. love about this town. You know, it's like, you know, there's Arthur and I, Donna Rose, are your friends. You know? Yeah, and I've enjoyed it all the, the whole way. Yeah, well, me, and I uh, remember you coming here from across the street at the school. Why blowing glass? What's that about? Blowing glass, uh, the whole, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So I used to do only uh, art mediums as such as like, uh, you know, just pencils and sketching and, and uh, painting and uh, a little bit of uh, uh, figure and realism, you know, and stuff that you'd want to be an artist and go, oh, I want to paint what I see. You know, if you, you see a guitar, you go, oh, I want to paint a guitar or I want to draw this. <laughs> People get so angry and, it, and it, or not angry, but frustrated. And it, I feel like it can, it can uh, take away from um, uh, their creativity, you know, and uh, uh, being an artist, uh, I just was going for every medium I can, you know, so paint and pencil, anything I could get into, and I was in Hawaii enjoying the beautiful, beautiful island of Kauai, and um, I actually met these, uh, this, these two guys over there, Kyle and Andy, who actually taught me uh, how to blow glass, and um, the whole story is I tried it once and I was hooked. And the day I tried glass blowing, I knew that this was it. It, it was going to be glass blowing for glass blowing forever. forever. Yep. And really? it's it's my it's my medication. It's my it's my enjoyment. It's my passion. And uh, and it's I I love it every day. Yeah, but how <laughs> how do you you know loving it so much like that? How do you actually 
sell it or give it away. I know you well, give that's, away. That's I saw a, a little Buddha that you gave. Yeah. Arthur. Well, that's a big part of it, you know, is where the, uh, being an artist is, am I, am I in it to make money or am I in it for the love of the work? And, and um, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's very expensive. So for a lot of people, it, it would be harder to get in and just start going for it. But believe it or not, I, I uh, spent a lot of money working and learning how to do this. But but uh, it all came about um, just because I enjoyed, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I got into it and uh, I enjoyed just the, the whole art. Everything is different. Every single piece is different. And uh, that, that you're talking about, is, what you're talking about selling is more of a design aspect. So if I were to make the same thing over and over, okay. you know, like and production. right, like a production line, kind of like these two here, these are uh, candlesticks, uh, candlestick holders. That's and, the, beautiful. and yeah, and these are my design. I kind of came up with the leaf and people have done it before, but, um, but I came up with that. So that would be more of like uh, something that I would sell, right? I get it. And then this this here is a complete piece of art that I call Dancing in the Rain. That's beautiful. And, uh, That's and that, the story can on you, that can you was. Pull it out a yeah, bit? no, of course. Once you, you don't knock your drink over. Um, but, um, the, pull it out so Dan can like really see just that one. Yeah, the whole story with this one is that um, I had an a art show for SBCC City College and uh well sbcc and um i had a, a project to do and i was in 3d art and i and no one was doing glass of course because it, it wasn't for school and i asked him hey can i do this this piece of glass i have an idea and uh he said you know go for it and we'll see if we can put it in so i uh i made this kind of cool piece of art that it, it hits on three points which is something that uh we learned in the class, and I a took aspects of stuff that we learned in, in the class at City College, and uh, I created this piece, and, and this is, to me, is more true art, whereas this would be more of design. Right, right. And and this is something that, yeah, I'll sell it if someone really, really wanted, wanted it. it. They have to love it. So if you would like it, you know, <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's more of I, my enjoyment, is right. this right here. Is, being able to there's no endless possibilities you know right and that's the same in life but but with when you have a uh, a narrowed uh, focused uh, medium then you can just go forever right so if people want you to get a hold of you lead a glass um, at gmail.com is my email. Lagolita? Yeah. Lagolita La Glass uh, is, is uh, nice. yeah, that's my email. So. Lagolita Glass. Yeah, Lagolita Glass so at, com? yeah, no, just Lagolita Glass at uh, gmail.com. Gmail yep. Got it. I and got it. Uh, that's, glass that's my main com. form of, uh, of uh, communication for people uh, who want to do business. Normally, it's, um, people asking, you know, commission works. Everybody out there, this this is exquisite stuff. I mean, it's really, really beautiful. Some of these little vases are so gorgeous. Thank you. You know. Um, so, I mean, as far as decor decorative, decorative work, the seahorses and stuff like this, I do oh, um, Christmas ornaments. Oh, wow. So what I do is I throw a loop on and I sell um, stuff like this as Christmas ornaments and the same with what I was showing Dan was this. Something like this would would have some swirls, some nice, beautiful color. That's and amazing. we've actually been sending out uh, Christmas ornaments instead of Christmas cards. It's been, you know, really great. Really appreciate having me on the oh, show. Oh, so make Great sure job. you keep your dreams alive, everyone. Well, thanks so much, Tim. No problem. And uh, I, I'm sure there's a, a musician coming up next on the musician segment. So stay tuned on Channel 17 TVSB in Santa Barbara. Thanks. Bye for now. We'll have cheers and we'll have an artist next time. Bye. Thanks Good so luck. Much, oh, you're appreciate welcome. It. You're so welcome. Mini Woodstock, everyone. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the artist segment this month. Yes, we're now at the musician segment. So don't adjust your TV sets. And remember, you can get us on YouTube, for Reeve channel, F-O-R-E-A-V-E, -E, and also online at the same time, watch TVSB. Okay, here we go. So I have a wonderful guest. You remember Kimmy Van Dyke last June? Yes, we had a ukulele player. Well, this time we have Holly Duffy all the way, believe it or not, 
from Hawaii. Yes, everybody in Hawaii knows Holly Duffy, it seems. Welcome, Holly. I'm so happy you could make the musician segment and be our star this month. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so, okay, you play a ukulele and you're a musician. So why don't you share with us why the <clears throat> ukulele? Well, I was living on the big island of Hawaii and I saw these little cute instruments everywhere. I was a school teacher and I thought those look like a violin. I, I grew up playing violin and so I finally one day picked up my families and a, a fellow school teacher and friend just gave me a brief little lesson and he said, hum while you strum. Hum while you strum. <laughs> for me to get, be told that because I started practicing chords and a song came really quickly called Bloom. Oh nice. Yeah and I thought oh my goodness and then I went to teach school and it was an intense day with the children. Uh, it was a ninth grade class. I taught special education and I loved it and I said hey if you, if you do all of your work today I'll play you a song. <laughs> and sure enough, at the end of the day, the students remembered, <laughs> and I didn't know. Oh, and did. I played Bloom, and they loved it. And I'd never seen them behave better. And they th and I started teaching music at the school. The uh, music teacher happened to walk in while I was playing. I thought I would get in trouble, but he said, hey, we need help with voice and ukulele classes. So then I started teaching at that school. I believe you were also doing television shows a bit like this one yes. in Hawaii. Tell everybody I, a little bit about that. That must have been fun. It was really fun. I, I played different characters and uh, did a comedy or community comedy show that I called Fairy Funny Films, <laughs> like fairy. <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I had family and friends and we did skits and then aired on the community access channel there. So which island were you at? On the Big Island. Oh, nice. And I was on uh, Naleo o Hawaii, which means the Voices of Hawaii. Nice. And that was the community access channel there. Gosh, we didn't get you to the Aloha Spirit Bash last week. I didn't see you there. Oh, I didn't hear about oh, it. Oh, my goodness. We had it in uh, the Ealings Park on near Los Positas. Every year it was their fifth one, yeah. So every oh year they have it. So you have to get involved with that and perform because they had ukulele players and they had, well, they had the co Carl and the Coconuts was playing there and they oh. went off to the bowl after that, Hollywood Bowl to play. Fun. It was. It was a really fun um, afternoon and we all went there last Saturday and, and it was great. So you'll have to get involved with the Aloha Spirit Bash next year. Yes. So have you been back in, well back, was this your first time to Santa Barbara or? I was born in Santa Barbara County. Oh, you were? Yes. That's on my birth certificate, which surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I first spent the first year of my life in Shell Beach. Oh gosh, and nice there. Yeah, right on the ocean. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Was a little baby. That, that, yeah, <laughs> that's up north for those that don't know. Shell Beach is very beautiful. Yes. And then I spent the second year of my life in San Luis Obispo. Oh, that's nice too. <laughs> yeah. And then I moved. I grew up in six different states in the western United States. Wow. And, and now I'm back here. And I've been here for almost five, yeah, five years this next year. What? Your family still lives in Hawaii, though? They just moved uh, to Utah. Oh, my is, goodness. That's, yeah. wow. Big, big That's change. a big change. Yes. That's a big change. Wow. Is, is this because your father or mother has different work careers that they have to go and move? Or? Yes. Okay. It's been all different Oh, reasons. okay. Oh, my. Uh, different family divorces, remarriages, right. job right. changing. Right. And it just... So are you the oldest in your family? I am. Oh, okay, I'm the that's why. Right. Eight kids. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah. You must have had a lot of fun. We did. Yeah, we still do. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the music, so you know, you grew up learning to play violin. Yes. So you you were at what school in Hawaii then, or were you somewhere else then? <clears throat> I was in Utah. Oh, you in so you you lived in Utah for a while too. For most of my my childhood. goodness. For a lot, about ten years of my childhood. Okay. Was so that's when the music got a hold of you at that age? It, it did. Well, I always sang. My mother always sang with us, our grandmother, and we grew up Mormon. And so there was a lot of singing with that as well. And Yeah, they do do a lot of singing with the Mormon um, community. 
community. I know that. Mm. I've had different friends, even here. Uh -huh. I know there's a, a few Mormons that I know here, and it's always very lively. Yes. Lots of dancing and things like that, too, which was, was very interesting, I thought. I think it yeah. is, looking yeah. back, too, at how much, yeah, we did dance and play music. You did. You had a lot of fun. I think they did a lot of social activities, which is good yes. for, for young people growing up. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you were in, when, so from Utah, you then took off, then is that when you went to when did you I go went to Hawaii? Hawaii. I was after I was living out from Utah. I was in Oregon oh. and Washington State, and then I also spent time in Arizona. My dad wow. lives in Phoenix, and so then when I was in or back in Oregon, of uh, my family. Okay, I'm getting okay. Washington. When I was in Washington State, my family moved to Hawaii ah. right when I turned 18. Oh no! And so I stayed on the okay. mainland. Okay, so yeah. you had to decide: Am I going to go visit, or what am I going to do? Right? Exactly. Because you were older, making decisions. So were mm -hmm. you playing then around at that point, like in in Washington State? Did you perform then, or? I actually was. I still. I was playing piano, and I was trying to learn how to record music because I had been. I had written songs when I was a little girl, and I had started singing karaoke. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. my sister was a musician who performed in a band, too, and I would drive her to her gigs and be around the band and dance and support the music, and so her and I would go sing karaoke for fun, and finally, after lots of practice and recording myself on the computer, I nailed some songs and actually received good feedback, so I, I, got, I was more motivated to perform in front of people. Well, anything you want to tell them out there, how people can get a hold of you to, um, you know, maybe they want a ukulele player to come to their wedding or their anything, their activity. Mm -hmm. So where would they, how would they get a hold of you? I know you're on Facebook. Yes. Holly I'm... Duffy, musician on Facebook. But mm -hmm. um, is there anything else, like an email address or a website that you have? Yes. Okay, well, but, tell them all out there. Okay, thank you. It's hollyduffy.com, and that's just H-O-L-L-Y-D-U-F-F-Y. And everybody out there also, because I'm hoping that Holly will be able to um, come back on the Mini Woodstock with Tutu Time. That is my hope, because Holly really is great at playing with kids. So that's something that you all might want to remember out there, okay? Anyway, so bye-bye from the music segment, and we're going to come back and jam with Holly. That'll be fun. Thank you. 
96 or 91 Holly will make you have a good time You'll see Just give her a call Just say Holly Just call our friend Holly Duffy That's our friend She's available, give her a call. See if she's available, give her a call. Holly Duffy, plays a mean ukulele. A mean ukulele. So make sure you give our friend a call. Thank you all for listening to a great show today. And Holly, you better come on back and keep the wine in the glass, my friend. Just keep the wine, keep the wine coming, because we all have a good time with our friend Holly. Plays a mean ukulele. Yeah. I think we touched me. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. That was it. awesome. <laughs> and that was Ravel, right? Yes. Nice. Ravel said that. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> Nope, 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 nope,